Chapter 7 Global Marketing These questions are the learning objectives guiding the chapter and will be explored in more detail in the following slides. What factors aid the growth of globalization? How does a firm decide to enter a global market? What ownership and partnership options do firms have for entering a new global market? What are the similarities and differences between a domestic marketing strategy and a global marketing strategy? Marriott hotels have invested consistently in global markets for decades and build brand equity around the world. They also craft messages that are relevant to all travelers. They also choose media that reaches their target, including global channels, in-flight television ads, and print placements in Economist. This YouTube link shows their international TV ad. Countries such as India have benefited extensively from the globalization of production. With a large, educated workforce, India has been able to attract firms from across the world to locate operations there. These operations represent a wide variety of industries, from banking to medicine, and include insurance, accounting, radiography, etc. The growth of global markets has been facilitated by organizations that are designed to oversee their functioning. Perhaps the most important of these organizations is represented by the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT. The original GATT also included the founding of the International Monetary Fund, but in 1994, the GATT was replaced by the World Trade Organization. This link is to the WTO website. There are four criteria necessary to assess a country market. Economic analysis, infrastructure and technological analysis, government actions or inactions, and socio-cultural analysis. The greater the wealth of a country, generally the better the opportunity a firm will have in that particular country. A firm conducting an economic analysis of a country market must look at three major economic factors the general economic environment, the population size and growth rate, and real income. The web link brings you to the current index, which can be viewed as a map or as a bar chart. Global population has been growing dramatically since the turn of the century. In 2006, the United States hit a landmark 300 million people. Although that may seem like a large number, other countries are growing at much faster rates. Some Western nations face serious population shortages and will have to rely on immigration to maintain their employment levels. Successful firms make their products accessible to average buyers, which in many countries means offering products in smaller portions that make them affordable. A firm's ability to conduct business in a particular country is in large measure determined by that country's infrastructure. Infrastructure is defined as the basic facilities, services, and installations needed for a community or society to function, such as transportation and communications systems, water and power lines, and public institutions like schools, post offices, and prisons. Trade negotiations often revolve around reducing or eliminating tariffs, quotas, or similar impediments to trade. Both tariffs and quotas benefit domestically made products because they reduce foreign competition. Trade negotiations often revolve around reducing or eliminating tariffs, quotas, or similar impediments to trade. Discuss the recent trade battles between U.S. and foreign agriculture producers, for example, sugar, corn. Many foreign producers accuse the United States of limiting market access through unfair tariffs and quotas whereas the United States insists that it must protect U.S. agriculture. Ask students, what do you think? Which side would you take in this debate? Both governments and independent groups call boycotts. Consumers are likely to call a boycott if they believe that a marketing practice is unethical or unfair to groups of individuals. For example, Many students demanded that their universities boycott Nike products for their sports teams in protest of Nike's labor practices. Exchange rate refers to the regulation of a country's currency exchange rate, the measure of how much one currency is worth in relation to another. 
A method of avoiding an unfavorable exchange rate is to engage in counter trade. Counter trade is a trade between two countries where goods are traded for other goods and not for hard currency. Marketers must consider the trade agreements to which a particular country is a signatory or the trading bloc to which it belongs. A trade agreement is an intergovernmental agreement designed to manage and promote trade activities for a specific region, and a trading bloc consists of those countries that have signed the particular trade agreement. The European Union is an economic and monetary union that currently contains 25 countries. The European Union represents a significant restructuring of the global marketplace. By dramatically lowering trade barriers between member nations within the Union, the complexion of the global marketplace has changed. Perhaps no other aspect of globalization has posed more difficulties to marketers than culture. Outsiders often have trouble understanding the detailed meanings associated with proper communication in a foreign culture. One important cultural classification scheme that firms can use is Geert Hofstede's dimensions concept. Hofstede believed cultures differ on five dimensions. Power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism, masculinity, and time orientation. When a firm has concluded its assessment analysis of the most viable markets for its products and services, it must then conduct an internal assessment of its capabilities. After this internal assessment, the firm must choose its entry strategy. Many firms follow a progression in which they begin with less risky strategies, such as export and franchising, and move to increasingly risky strategies as they gain confidence in their abilities. Given your awareness of Spanish culture, why might this ad be effective? How is it different than a U.S. ad? The answer is that it is not that different at all. Now check yourself. 1. What are key metrics that can help analyze the economic environment of a country? The general economic environment, the market size and population growth rate, and real income. 2. What types of government actions should we be concerned about as we evaluate a country? Tariffs, quotas, boycotts, exchange controls, and trade agreements. 3. What are five important cultural dimensions? Cultural dimensions include power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism, masculinity, and time orientation. In each strategy, the risks and rewards change. As risk increases, so do the potential rewards. Exporting represents the lowest risk level for the firm. This continues as you increase the risk and control of the entering firm. Direct investment represents the greatest risk and control and the greatest potential reward. Now check yourself. Which entry strategy has the least risk and why? This entry strategy requires the least financial risk but also allows for only a limited return to the exporting firm. Global expansion often begins when a firm receives an order for its product or service from another country, in which case it faces little risk because it has no investment in people, capital, equipment, buildings or infrastructure. 2. Which entry strategy has the most risk and why? Direct investment requires a firm to maintain 100 percent ownership of its plants, operation facilities, and offices in a foreign country, often through the formation of wholly owned subsidiaries. This entry strategy requires the highest level of investment and exposes the firm to significant risks, including the loss of its operating and or initial investments. Global segmentation, targeting, and positioning is more complicated than local STP. Firms considering a global expansion have more difficulties understanding the cultural nuances, subcultures within each country must be considered, and consumers often view products and their role as consumers differently in different countries. A product or service must often be positioned differently in different markets. The most efficient route is to develop and maintain a single global positioning strategy. There are three potential global product strategies. Sell the same product or service in both the home country market and the host country. Sell a product or service similar to that sold in the home country 
but include minor adaptations or sell totally new products and services. Products at the extreme ends of high-tech, such as electronics, computers, software versus paper and pencil, or high-touch, that is, luxury goods, jewelry versus staple products, continuums are easy to standardize, but those in the middle generally require varying levels of adaptation to local markets. Determining the selling price in the global marketplace is an extremely difficult task. Many countries still have rules that govern the competitive marketplace, including those that affect pricing. Other issues, such as tariffs, quotas, anti-dumping laws, and currency exchange policies, can also affect pricing decisions. Whole Foods is focusing on the shopping experience and playing up its mystique from the U.S. They have staff to answer consumers' questions and offers more choices than other organic retailers. In addition, they offer services including facials and chair massages. Delivering products to local retailers can be incredibly difficult and frustrating. Infrastructure issues often prevent traditional distribution methods and require creative adjustments. Global firms must find distribution strategies that enable them to reach even really remote markets. For instance, Avon sells and delivers cosmetics to customers using canoes. This YouTube ad is for FedEx and shows how international distribution can be difficult for many companies. How do firms market their products in countries with very low literacy levels? Imagine you are promoting a new soft drink. How would you do it without written communication? Now check yourself. 1. What are the components of a global marketing strategy? Determining the target markets to pursue and developing a marketing mix that will sustain a competitive advantage over time. 2. What are the three global product strategies? 1. Sell the same product or service in both the home country market and the host country. 2. Sell a product or service similar to that sold in home country but include minor adaptations. 3. Sell totally new products or services. A boycott pertains to a group's refusal to deal commercially with some organization to protest against its policies. Cultural imperialism is the belief that one's own culture is superior to that of other nations. Exchange control refers to the regulation of a country's currency exchange rate, the measure of how much one currency is worth in relation to another. The purpose of the General Trade Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, was to lower trade barriers such as high tariffs on imported goods and restrictions on the number and types of imported products that inhibited the free flow of goods across borders. Infrastructure is the basic facilities, services and installations needed for a community or society to function. A quota designates the maximum quantity of a product that may be brought into a country during a specified time period. A tariff is a tax levied on a good imported into a country. A trade agreement is an intergovernmental agreement designed to manage and promote trade activities for a specific region.